Welcome to another episode. Then I have to edit it and cut it. Okay. Kol kavu akimechza amechza. We talked about Bittul Barov. And I just want to give two minutes of background for what we did about Bittul Barov because it's going to come into play when we talk about Kavua. The when we talk about Bittel Barov, we have two ways of understanding it. Either, and within one of the ways, there were two other possibilities. Okay? Either Bittel Barov means, take the word Bittel seriously, and it means that the Isser doesn't exist anymore. When you have a majority and a minority, the minority halachically loses its identity because it's a mixture, and it's Kimandaleta. That's the word Bittel. Like you do Bittel Chametz, it's Kimandaleta. It's as if it doesn't exist anymore. Okay? Or the Lushan of the Rush, Nepach Iser Liot Heter. Okay, that's one way of viewing it. Of course, it's a very big Kiddush that there should be such a halacha that if you have three pieces of meat, two of them are uh, kosher, one of them is Nevela, that the Nevela ceases to exist. Okay? But that's one way of understanding it. Um, the other way of understanding it is really that, that that does not happen. It's basically built on the halacha of Sveikot, that you have Hulchimachar Harov. If you have three pieces of meat, when I pick up the first piece of meat, I can say that most probably the isser is in the other two. I pick up the second piece of meat, so I say the isser is either um, in the one that I didn't eat yet, or in the one I ate already, but this one is probably mutter. Now when I get to the third one, I say I probably ate the isser already, and this is probably mutter, so I can eat this, I can eat this one also, right? So that is based on holchimachar harov, not bitl barov, okay? Um, now, so there are those that say that when you talk about um, rove, you can't, one person can't eat all three, or you can't eat all three at the same time. Okay? The Tosad Reed goes so far as to say that if one person eats all three, is chay v'chatas. Because he clearly holds, he holds you need three different people, and he clearly holds that there's no such thing as bitl barov when you talk about yavesh. There's only holchim achar harov. Okay? The question that we had is in the sheet that it holds, in the rush that holds that there's Holchimachar Harov, that there's, I'm sorry, that there's Bittel Barov, how does that work? Is it just that when you have this mixture, so the way I described before, the Isser disappears, or no, it's a two-stage process, and this, you have to digest this because it's going to come at the end of our discussion of Kavua, that it's a two-stage process. It begins with Holchimachar Harov, Namely, because I, can, I have this fiction in quotation marks, I could say, this piece is probably mutter, the issue is one of these two. And then the second one is probably mutter because it was either the one before or the one after. And the last one is mutter because I probably ate it already. Because I can play that game, therefore I say, the next step is that they're all mutter at the same time. But it's built, it's predicated upon holchim haharov. Because you have holchim haharov, that generates bitl barov. Okay. Or no, there's Bittel Barov, and it's something that has nothing to do with Holchim Acharov. We talked about Nafkaminot, and we'll see more, whether you can have Bittel Barov if you don't have Holchim Acharov. Right? Is there a Lechachim of the Avad? Nafkamina also, like I would think that in the case of, the question is, if Bihu Tov Lahachmir, in the case of, uh, according to the Rashba, according to the read, I would say, like, it'd be better not to be so much on the Hochina Harov and to throw it all out and to, and to and not take a chance because you're ultimately over. God lets you risk it, but you really would be better. So from me, I tell you. But well, according yeah, okay. to the Rosh, it wouldn't be that way yeah. at all. You would say, no, it's nefach and mutar, and it's totally go for it and do whatever you want. Right. It whatever could be. Going. We saw this in the pre Chadash when he talked about the difference between bittel of min b'mino and bittel of min b'she'eno mino. Remember, in min b'mino, he said the iser is still there, right? Because there's nothing to be mitgaber one on the other. And in no mino, the bittel b'shishim, the iser is gone. So whether that should affect how you look at it, uh, it should. And when we do the sugya of Bittu Lissel mm-hmm. and the flip side of that sugya, which is Davashe Matirin, we'll talk about it. But yes, your intuition is correct. How I look at Bittu 
will impact on whether I think Bittel is only lechat, is only B'diyavid or Lechat Chila. Because if Bittel is, we can spell it out, if Bittel is wiping out the Isser, so then it's Lechat Chila. Right? If Bittel, the Isser is still there, but you're allowed to partake because of Dinei Sveikot, so then it's better not to. Then it's a, then it's a good humor to say, I don't want to be Somech on Bittel. Right? Yeah. Can you, okay. can you remind us what the Nachman mean between the two definitions of the... Uh... Yeah, what happens if you have... First of all, do you need maybe more than a simple rov? We saw that the language of the Rambam is Pishnai, when he talks about Lach. And all the, the examples are Chad Betray. So normally Chad Betray, we just think is a simple majority when you read it. But maybe it's Dafka 2 to 1. So that's what I want to talk about that. Okay? That would be... If it's that would be a Nachamina. In other words, if it's, a, if it's built on rov, then a simple rov should be sufficient. If there's Bittel, right, where the Isser okay. disappears... So then there's room to say, all right, Bittel Barov, just like you have Shishim, which is an overwhelming shear of Bittel. Mm-hmm. So maybe even by Yavesh, in order to make the issue disappear, 51% is not enough. You need 63%, 66%. Why that should be, I don't know. But, it may, but you're not married to 51%. You could have been Mikre 51%, but maybe you need more. Right? Just like you need more for Lach. Okay? You with me? Learn it from a pasuk. Yeah, but rove is like, what is a rove? It's an overwhelming rove. Okay, okay. right. Said it, fine. You know, so can we know? So, okay, all right. So that, in a nutshell, is what we talked about last time. So let's see the gemara here in uh, Ketubot. We work. We this. We have next week is the last week before Pesach, right? Okay. Before, right? and next week, um, Rav Jeff, Rav Jeff. Fox, he's going to be here visiting us. Um, I'll talk about that later. What's his name? He's going to be talking about gay root. But uh, hope, the, the reason I'm saying this is that today we're going to talk about the theoretical foundations of Kavua. And next week we're going to finish up with Kavua with practical ramifications of defining Kavua in particular circumstances as it relates to, to the laws of Borla, Shemitah, and things like that. If you have fruits that come and you don't know where they came from, so you get into these Kavua issues. Okay? So that's going to be next week. There's Chazanish about it. So that we'll talk about next week. But this week is just the, the conceptual foundations. Okay? So let's start. So the Gemara says, Gemara in Ketubot, on Daf Tetrav Manav. It's a Gufa. I'm a Rabbi Zeir. Kol Kavua Kamech Tzal Mech Tzadami. If you... Uh, we'll see. The Gemara gives a, explains... Gives an example of what it is and what we're talking about. So, Menale and Rabbi Zera, huh? Has Rabbi Zera know this? So, the Gemara, I'm skipping a little bit. Um, the Gemara knows this, it says, from Mitishat Svardeim Visheretz Echad Benehem. So, it's Svardeim is Tahar Sheretz is Tameh. Vinaga Bechad Mehem. The person touched one of them. Veeno Yede Beeze Mehem Naga. Okay? So, there it's Feko Tameh. Because you have um, that's luchumra. So how do we know that it's minat Torah? We're looking for a case to tell, for kavua to be minat Torah. How can jumpy frogs be kavua? They're dead. They're dead. Ah. You didn't think of that. Oh. Nothing. <laughs> like, no, I did not. Okay. Been no, okay. This is the klal. Oh, all right, we're going to delete this from the film because this is the klal. The klal is that nothing alive is mitame except people. Okay? So the Tzvardeim and the Sheretz are dead. Okay? And it's a Suffolk to my Sheretz. Okay? Okay. Um, so, Ela mitisha shratzim u'tzvardea echad b'neihem. Okay, so now we have a row of shratzim. V'naga b'echad mehem ve'ene odem ve'ezem naga. Listen. V'rishut ha'yachid sveko tamei. Because that's the principle of Suffolk to my Sheretz is tamei. So you see, you treat it as a safek, even though it's a rov of shratzim. So this proves that the din of kavua kamechsa mechzadam is min ha-Torah. Okay? Because if it was midrabanan, the previous cases are only luchumra, so maybe for some reason we have a chumra midrabanan, like why they should think of a chumra like that, separate issue. But the fact that we use the safek also, lukula, indicates it's min ha-Torah. Okay? The fact that that you have a rove of shratzim and in Rishut Harabim it's Tahor shows that this din of Kavua Kamechza Mechza is Minat Torah. Okay? But isn't the difference between Rishut Yechid and Rishut Harabim a Rabbana thing? No. No, no. no so not for Sotah. So, 
Alright, so let's continue. Ubidorotem umidoraita minalan. Amakra va'aravlo v'kamalav. Adshit kavenlo. Okay, so that's a halacha that doesn't apply here. Okay, that murder has to be premeditated. Okay, va'aravlo v'kamalav. Okay, v'rabanan. Okay, there's a disagree. They they dash in a different way. Amrit v'rabiyanai. Prat lezorek even lego. Okay, rabbanan say that va'aravlo v'kamalav does not come to tell you that nitkavei laharagetzev laharogetzev haharagetzev is patur, right? But it comes to tell you something else, right? That if you throw a stone into a group of people and you kill someone, you're patur, okay? So what's the situation? Hei dami, ilema deika tishak knanin ve'echad Yisrael b'nehem, right? Mises Bezdin is only if you kill a Jew, Okay? Mrs. Bezdin is only if you kill a Jew. If you kill a non-Jew, there's no Mrs. Bezdin. So that's what we're talking about. So he said, if there is a row of Kna'anim v'Yisrael, Echad b'nehem, so the person would be patur anyway. Teipuk le deruba Kna'anim ninhu. You don't need the din of Kavu. There the row is Mekil. Okay? Inami palgu palga, if it's half and half, half Jews, half non-Jews, safek nefashot la'aket. Right, so what's the situation? Lo tzricha deika tishai Yisraelim v'knani echad b'neihem. Da havale knani kavua v'chol kavua k'mechza al mechza dami. So in that situation, there's a group of people in a room, right? and the rov is is Yisraelim, and there's one knani, and you use lethal force that can kill someone, and you actually kill someone, and we don't know who you killed. Right. So we say, so it's called Kavua Kamech Tzalmech Tzadami, or maybe it has to do with your intention. Wait, you know, no, we, we know who you killed. You All right, killed we don't know a what, Jew, but you didn't know who you killed. But you didn't know. Okay, so that has to, like, the, the, for that we need the different so how, need the I, first. I, Hold on, let me just get it out there. Like Kavua? All right, <laughs> let's assume how people can be Kavua is very, it's actually very important for the laws of Yuchsin. And we'll talk about that next week also. Okay? Um, but in any case, uh, so that's the case of Kavua. Where you have Yisrael Echad, I'm sorry, Knani Echad v'Tishai Yisraelim. If you would rel- if you would go on the road, you would kill the person. You would kill the Rotzayach. But since we say Kol Kavua Kamech Zamech Tzadami, and that Yisrael and that guy is Kavua, so it makes it like a Safek Hashakul and Safek Nefashot Lahakeh. Okay, so that's so we learn it out according to Rabbanan from. Um, Va'arav lo v'kamalav, and it's not talking about nitkaven la rogi zeh v'aragi zeh, but rather tisha yisraelim v'kanani yechad. Okay. Now, um, just for the record, there are rishonim who say that the one who's cholek, <coughs> if you hold nitkaven la rogi zeh v'aragi zeh is pater, which is the first day, then you don't have the din of kavua. That the Ran in Sanhedrin says that Rabbi Shimon, who's cholek on rabbanan, actually holds the din of kavua as midi rabbanan and not minat Torah. We don't pass in that way, but um, this din of kavua, which is, um, you could say it's foundational in Yoridea, also all sin of Yud, is, uh, like where Kuf Yud is based yeah. on it. How so we do don't, it, that's me, Rabban. What does he do with Teisha Chanuyas? So be Shimon, he can do what he wants. He's Cholek. So oh, it's a price that he's Cholek. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fine. <laughs> he's a Tana. No, right. fine. Yeah, it's actually a surprise. Do we have No, it doesn't, it's right? not Beferish. That's why the Ran said, the Ran can say it, it's not Beferish. Right? Okay. But the Ran says that Rabbi Shimon holds it Kavuaz Midra I'm just bringing that up so you should know that there's somebody that says it. Okay? Okay. Um, Alright, so what's the case of Kavua? All right. So the case of Kavua. Um, you saw the case of Teisha Chanuyot. I think we have it. Um, did I bring it? I didn't even bring the case here. Well, it was in the beginning of that. It's in the beginning of this Gemara, yeah. right? So the case of Teisha Chanuyot. So let's talk about that case. That's the, that's the most common case. You have, say you're talking about a wall situation, which is enclosed. Right? And you have ten butcher shops. Uh, and nine of them are kosher butcher shops. And one of them is a trade butcher shop. Okay? And you go into one of them, you don't know which one you went into, and you, and you bought meat there, and you come home, 
Now you have this piece of meat, you don't know where you bought where you bought it. Right? So there you say it's a you don't say Hokimacha Harov and the rove butcher shops. The question is which butcher shop did you go into? And so I would say, without the din of Kavua, well, there are ten butcher shops, nine of them were kosher, one of them was tray, so I probably went into the kosher one. So Hokimacha Harov and I could eat I could eat the piece of meat. But you don't say that. You say, because since the butcher shops are kvuim, so kol kavua kamechza al mechza dami. And therefore it's a safek hashakul. And if we're talking about an isa doraisa, so safek doraisa luchomra. If we're talking about an isa drabana, so safek doraisa luchomra. But since we're talking about an isa doraisa, it would be safek doraisa luchomra. If it's a ubinimsa halacha charo, but if you didn't find the piece, hold on one second, if you didn't find the piece of meat in one of the butcher shops, but you found it in outside of whatever the uniting principle is, say, if you found it in the parking lot, so the mall is Kavua. Right? Outside of the Kavua system, Ubi Parush, it was Porish from one of the butcher shops, okay, so and you don't know where it came from. The of the mall, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I don't want to get into how you define exactly, right, but not in one of the butcher shops, right? Then, then you would say, Hulchim HaKaharov. Parush, now you said, where did this piece of meat come from? Mistam, it came from the kosher butcher shop, and then you can eat it. So if your safek relates to which was born, the Leidata safek was in one of the stores, so the stores are kvuim, and you have to say, okay. all well, this seems very formalistic. We're going to try to understand it, but just let's get the facts out there. If the safek is no lad, the parush is when it's not in one of the stores, then we say, holchim achar harov. Okay? Those are just the facts. Israel, you got a question? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just wanted to point out yeah. that when you say that the stores are kvuim, so you're feeding Rachel's uh, take on this, which is that if something doesn't have its shoes nailed to the floor, so it it's not kavua. kavua. But so that's not the stores are the same stores in either case. Whether the whether the leda sasafik was the parish or the leda sasafik was in the store, it's the same store. It's the stores are always kavua, right? And and, and the but and the, the guy but the and, and the was guy no gets killed be kavua. can be milling around inside the pit where they're all standing. That's not the. It's not a, a question. Right, right. Of, it's a question of how the suffix comes about. I just, that, well, that's what the Leidata Safek is. Uh, you're right. I'm just saying that when you say the store is a Kavua, it makes it no. sound like the problem is, the, or the, the interesting fact is that the store is a stationary. So, relative to something like a caravan, you know, passing by, which I'm sure you'll also get to, so, yes. But I'm saying over here, in both cases, the store is a stationary. It's a question of whether <coughs> stores are kavua and the suffix is kavua, the stores are kavua, but they're not part of the suffix. The suffix is bekavua. right, but I'm saying stationary stores. Whether the latest suffix was on yeah, the meat outside okay. or what? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If, that, if I was said something was misleading, I thought it was clear. No, but I, yeah. I, can, can you look at the question that you raised last week? Because what? it seemed to make the question much worse. Last week we learned that what was the marker for the dinner grove? Okay, so let's talk about it. yeah. Achay Rabbi Matzot. Right, but the two cases the Gemara gave with Teisha Chanuyot or or Sanhedrin. It's the parish, but the Teisha Chanuyot and it's parish. No, but but the vote. But I'm not focusing on that. The, the Sanhedrin was the other one. Oh, so they talk about oh, so some yeah. Achron talk about that the Sanhedrin if it's people, then why isn't it Kavua? Yeah, exactly. So you see, you know what they say? The Dibur is parish. Okay. Uh, they like you have to you have to relate. They, they get around. it. I understand. Right. Somebody not, asked. I remember somebody asked, like, oh, but the best in Diana Makhvui. Don't okay. you want to say that the meat's Kavua? No. The store is Kavua? The store is what's Kavua. No, the, the, the meat is Kavua place. Right. And then it, now it's left. Now it's not the Makom Kavua. Right, but meaning that helps what you were saying. You think it's so clear that you understand that I am yeah. clear at all. L- let's, uh, let's try to clarify it. Okay? What, what if I don't know which of the stores... It's nine and one, and my issue is that I went. I know exactly the store I went into. I just don't know if that was one. That's, that's a different a, case. That's a totally different case. That's a different case. Yeah. We write that down. We talk about that next week. That's a different case. If it's not nikar botozman, that's called that's called kavua lemafreya. Right? You find out afterwards that there was an issue kavua, but at the time there wasn't. So the question is, what do you say is a leidat hasafek lemafreya? And that has to do with how you understand Kavua, which we didn't okay. get to yet. Okay? That's called Kavua the Mafreya, whether you say that. Okay? I think the Shach talks about it. I think the Shach and Arafat. Okay. 
All right, so hold on. Um, all right, so, before, so let's, let's understand this. It seems, it seems like it doesn't make any sense, right? That it's the same piece of meat. So if I, have, if, if I don't know which store I went into, so all of a sudden there I have to say, because the stores are kvuim, and however I define kvuim, right, for different things I might define kavua differently. With people, it makes sense, and we'll talk about this also, a lot of things are leading for next week. Uh, we'll talk about, the, when you talk about people being kavua, their intent may play a role. I'm just going to tell you, that's in Duyak and the Rambam. But when you talk about things, so obviously things don't have intentions, so there it might be, whether it's nailed down, or things that are not moving, etc. Okay? Um, so, but why should it make a difference? So we have to step back, and this is the approach, that Rav Lutzenstein spoke about this many years ago, um, this is the approach where most salvage you can to the, to the problem. And you have to start with, first you have to understand Rov. Because this seems to go fly in the face of the din of Rov. So before you say, well, how do I understand this exception to Rov, let's understand Rov. Oh, the din of Holchim Achar HaRov, which we have to flesh out now. Okay? So for this, um, this is Gemara Bavakama. And mo- more importantly is... I'm sorry, Bava Mitzia, is what the Tosot Rush says about this Gemara and Bava Mitzia. Okay? Um, the Gemara and Bava Mitzia is pretty involved. Um, okay, so let, let's, let's do it, okay? Uh, and Davava Mudbet. This is part of the Sugi of Takfo Kohen. What happens if it's Suffolk Bechor, right? Um, the Kohen has a right to the Bechor. If you have a suffix bechor, so the balabayit has the bechor, and we say normally hamotzi mechaver of araya. Right, so the kohen would have to prove that it's a bechor in order to take it from the from, from the balabayit. So what happens if he can't prove it and he and he takes the law into his own hands and he's tokef? Right, that's the whole the, the sugi of tefisa. Right, I can't prove it, but now now I have it. So it should be now. Now you have to prove it to take it back from me, right? So that's tukfo kohen motzi miyado or ein motzi miyado. Okay, that's the sugya. Okay, so in that context, right, we have the following discussion. Um, so the Gemara says, "Safek bechorot, dechad bechor adam, dechad bechor behema, bein torim, bein tmeim, amotzi mechaveru alav araya." Tmeim is a petach amor, right? The Tani Ala asurin begizav avoda. So even though the Baal holds on to the Bechor, because of the Dinei Mamonot, there's a Motzi Mechavir of Araya, the burden of proof rests upon the Kohen. But since it's a Suffolk, so the Isurim apply. You know, the Suffolk Mamon, Lahakel La Mitva, Suffolk Isur Lechumra, so it's also the Gizava Avodah, there's Kedushat Bechor. So on the one hand, it's Kedushat Bechor, but on the other hand, in Dinei Mamonot, it sits with the Balabait. Okay? Um, so does it make sense? You tell me that um, what's it? You want to say Oh, so he gets to keep it, because I'm also going to have a And the Chilo Tukfo, even before he's toke, if it's Asur Begiza Vavoda. I'm a lay rabbi, Kedushat, Bechor Ka'amrit, Lolam Emelach Tukfo Koen Motzin Oto Miyado, Afilach Yasur Begiza Vavoda, the Kedusha Ba Me'ele Hashani. The Kedusha does not depend on the Dinim Amonot. Okay? Alright. Now, I'm a lay rabbi, Chananya Le Rabbi. Okay? This is where it starts. So Rabbi said, what? Tukfo Kohen, Motzin Otomiyado. Can't keep it. Can't take the law into your own hands. It's in, not only can't you, but it's ineffective. If Kohen grabs the Bechor, so we take it out of his hands. And you don't say, Hamotzin, now Kohen can say, oh, prove it to me that it's not a Bechor. No, the last thing we know is that it was in Rashut of the Balabait. You needed proof to take it from him. You're taking it from him outside of the court is not valid. It goes back to the Baal Bait. Okay, that's the position of Rabbah. 
So Amalei Rav Chandani Le Rav, Tani de Mesaila. So he wants to prove that Tatvokoe Motsino Tomiado. Hasfekot Nichnasim Ladir Lehit Aser. Okay, you have Maaser Behema. And you have um, an animal which is safek, whether it's chayv and maaser behemah, because maybe it already went through the counting process. Okay, Just, it doesn't matter how the, how it is. So you have um, an animal which is a safek, whether it's chayav, and you bring it into the corral, and it adds up, and you maaser from those as well. The isal kedat of takfa coin ain motzino tomiyado amay nichnasim ladir. Because if you can say ain ain motzino tomiyado, that means you're saying it has kedusha. If it has kedusha, then you can't be maaser. Okay, so it must be if the coin takes it, you take it away from him, so you relate to it as chulin, so you can take maaser from it. Are you with me, or is this too involved? Okay. So if it's a mamon of the kohen, because the kohen has the potential to be toface, and then you're going to take, you're going to take the maaser. Who does the maaser go to? The maaser behema. Right, so it, go, it goes to it goes to the kohen, and it, it's a korban, right? So if if that happens, so then you you're executing your obligation. With a mama that doesn't belong to you because the Kohen has a claim on this mama. Okay? Amalei Abaye. Imi Shumha Lotisaye Lamar. If that's your proof, it's not a good proof. Hachabamaya Skinan, the case of Sekot Nechnasim Ladilit Aser, Kagon the Letle Elatish Avahu. We're talking about a specific case that there are nine animals which are definitely Chayv and Maser, but nine. Doesn't isn't the minimum number. So that if you just have nine, so you're not going to have maaser. And the tenth one is this suffix bechor. Okay. So then it there's a manavshach. The manavshach. I bar If the suffix bechor is not a bechor, and therefore it is chayv and maaser, then shaper kamaaser. Okay. The lav bar then there's no chiv to the kohen. She not poter atzmo b'mamono shel chaviro, right? The la bar chiv who tisha la bar surininu. Okay. Then Abaye I went back on what he said. Hadar amar Abaye la miltehi daamri. What I said before was wrong. Okay. Desfeka la bar isurihi. Because I wanted to say that if you have nine plus one, you're going to take it as a, you're going to be ma'aseh. No, a suffolk, by virtue of the fact that it is a suffolk, is not chayv and ma'aseh. So you can't, you can't do this miman of shach. By virtue, because there's a halacha here of asiri vada'i v'lo asiri suffolk. It's just, it's similar to uh, what the Mishonim say, like Svirata Omer. In Chutz you have Sveka di Yoma, right? Who remembers, right? In Chutzat Yasfeke di Yoma. So why don't you say, when you can't swear to Omer, so on the first night, um, maybe it's one. In Chutzlar, it's the first, Motze Chag Rishon, when you start counting Svirat Omer, even in Chutzlar, okay? You say, Ayom Yom Echad Omer. You don't say, Ayom Yom Echad, and, or maybe not. And then when you get to the second night, you don't say, Ayom Yom Echad, or Ayom Yom Shnayim, but it's Svirat di Yoma here. It's Motzei Yom Tov Sheni, and you're saying a Yom Yom Sheni Ba'omer, but maybe it's Yom Rishon Ba'omer. So why don't you do that? So what's the answer? It's not Sphira if you say one or two. To count means to say a number, right? If I say it's either one or two, then you didn't count. Count is you to do both. No, that's the point. You can't do both. To count is to be no cave in the number. Oh, that is the nature of the counting. One. And, and then, then stop. And then do the other. Uh, all right. But they didn't talk about that. It's like we've never done anything uh, like that. Right, not like we had never But the Balam Or says, that's what the Balam Or says, that, I think it's the Balam Or, that um, you can't have a sphere of me suffix. And that's what, that's what he's saying here also. You can't have asiri. Maybe it's asiri, maybe it's chi'i. 
So that's, you didn't count Asiri. It has to be Vadai Asiri. Okay? To speak a lot about Surihut. The Tna, Kafat Echad Min Amnuyin Letochan, Kulan Pturin. If one of the, the halach is that after you count, it's Over Takat Hashavet. Right, the, 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 the cattle goes, so you've got one, two, three, and then the tenth is Asiriya Kodesh. But so I count, well, I count one, two, three, four, five, and they don't behave, they're not cooperating. One of them jumps back into the, into the group of animals. So the one that went, that, the one that went through the Shevet already, he was Niftar B'minyan HaRa'ui. It was Ra'ui to be Ma'aser, and it went, it's like no double jeopardy, right? It went through the counting, so it can't be, it's already paturmi ma'aser. But it went back, now it's together with these animals that are still chayavim in ma'aser. So it patas the whole, the whole thing. Patas the whole tower of it. Right? Kulam paturim, v'isal gadatach, sveik abayisure, if you tell me that suffix, you can still count, you can still take ma'aser from a suffix, l'aser mimanafshach, do your mimanafshach. Okay? If it's a bar if this one that you that you said yes, this is maser, then it's good. And if the one that you're saying is ten is not ma, and you said it's maser, but who cares? It's already pater from minyan harawi. All right. So, um, so what's the answer? That's why if you have nine in one suffix, you not you can't do it mimanafshach because a suffix is not counting. What says ha asiri ya kodesh so it's asiri vaday v'lo asiri suffix. So you can't count the suffix. All right, that's the gemara. So the rush asks a very basic question. It's a tosta rush. I'm not going to the whole he has a number of different answers. He's, but the question is, on top, the im tomar, o toha kofets, yevatel, or yevutal, birov. The yukulam chayvim la'aser. We know this bitl birov. So why did you say bitl birov? So the rush at the end, um, V'od yesh lomar, the fourth line from the bottom of the rush. Kevin de chazina, da filu heka de yachol la aser miman of shach, patur, mishum da asiri vader machman of lo asiri safek. Since you have this halacha that is safek, you can't be mas, it's not chayv in maaser, by virtue of the fact that it's a safek. Afilu ki amrinan, kol de parish miruba parish. Right, because it's being poresh, it's not kavu, right? It's being poresh. So why don't you say this is from the rov? You have n- you have nine which are definitely chayav, one which is suffix. So why don't you say that it's it's um, batel, and what it comes out is called the parish miruba parish, okay? So even though you can say called the parish miruba parish, um, asiri suffix mikri, ela shatorahi tira suffix ze. Be'isurim. Dechtiv acharei rabim lato. This is the rush, remember. Right? The Zelda rush. Ve'nepach isu laheta ay de'bitu barov. Aval hacha le'olam lom nafik michlal safik asiri. I'll read that again. This is extremely important. Afilu ki amrinan kal de parish meruba parish. Asiri safik mikri. It's still, I'm adding, asiri safik adayin mikri. Right? It's still called the suffix. Ella, shato, this fits with me, with part of your formulation. It's mutter, but the, only because the Torah said it's mutter. It's not, quote unquote, really mutter. Mishimachi, Ella, shato, right? Tila suffix ze, biisurin. Why? The chitimach, re rabbi matot. And, vene pacha isu laheter. Ayidei bitu barov. Aval hacha, here, because in, in order to be ma'aser, you need vaday. Hacha la'olam no nafik michlal safik asiri. So what is he saying? He's saying that even though, you have to do a couple of sweeps on this rush. The first sweep is that even though you have a rove, 
it's still a suffix. Normally, in Isurin, that type of suffix, the Torah says you can ignore and go with the rov. But when you have a rov, the two ways of formulating this, if I have a majority of possibilities, statistical majority, whatever, so how do I relate to the minority possibility? Now, physically, in a sense, the minority possibility is still there. The question is, halakhically, how do I relate to it? So, the simple way of saying it is, just ignore it. It's as if, as if, it's not there. So he says that's not so. It is there. It's still a suffix. Look, you can have a rove which is 50, you can have a suffix which is 50-50. You can have a suffix which is 60-40 is also a suffix. And 90-10 is also a suffix. But the proportions are different, but you won't say it's not a suffix. So he says that it's still called a suffix. In Isurim, the Torah says that if you have a suffix of 51, 49, you can rely on the 51 and effectively ignore the 49. But it's not that it's not a suffix. Okay? Did we talk about what happens if you had... I think we lost it. If another, the suffix changes, right? You had two... You, ha- you have three. Two of them are mutter. One of them is... One of them is usur. Then you say it's mutter, and then another usur one falls in. It will still be. Uh, that I said with with uh, with. We didn't talk about um, chose of Maybe we'll have to find some time. Because if it's still yeah. suffix based on this logic, right? If it's still in its suffix status, so it should. Uh, no, but he wouldn't agree because he lets you cook it. He thinks once it's. Um, uh, right, because once this bit, we'll have. To, this is the second sweep that we have to do, which you're not going to do right now. Okay. The first thing that he's saying is, is that even though you have a rove, the suffix still remains. And this what? No, the, the problem. The problem is that is that is that you're you're taking the rush and you're generalizing it and leaving saying that when we when we that it informs on little rove even by assuming that you're saying the suffix still stays. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. After you have bittel, there's no suffix. After you have bittel, there's no suffix, because you need all three at the same time. No, no, We're but let's, let's move to a case of Ritzicha. I shoot somebody, and I say, well, there's a chance that the guy was a trefa. Okay? There's a minority chance that, you know, that he has a, a cardiac abnormality, and I, and I shouldn't be high of Ritzicha. So that's how you know. So that's the Gemara, that's a little bit come on. The Gemara proves from there that, you know, from, the, from cases like that, Right. That you hold from Ruben Lessa come on. No, but, but, but there's no suffix there. Oh, because there could be no lay data suffix. There are different types of row. A Ruben that, okay, look. He's talking here, okay. Uh, it, remember we, we saw in the Gemara in Chulin last week, and I said that the, the Gemara distinguishes two types of Sveikot. And we said, I said, we're talking about one of those Sveikot, one of those types of Sveikot, or two types of rows. One is Ruben de Ita come on, and the other is Ruben de Letta come on. Ruba sheyesh lefanenu and a rov sheein befanenu. We're talking about a rov sheyesh befanenu. In other words, there are ten pieces. There's a distinct population, and we know this is this. These amount is this way, and that amount is that way, and we just don't know the identity of the particulars. That's a ruba to eat to come on. A rov shu lefanai. Ten pieces of meat, a hundred pieces of meat. I know that out of the hundred pieces of meat, seventy-two are kosher, and uh, whatever twenty-eight are treif. Right. So that's a ruba to eat to come on. A ruba to let to come on is. Right? Where I know, not because I counted all the animals in the world, that most animals are not trefot, but the Derech most animals aren't trefot. A rov who brought your dot. But most pregnant women give birth. Etc. So there's Ruba de Kama. So I'm not talking, so you're talking about Ruba de Kama. In Ruba de Kama, it's very possible that you don't have a Leidat HaSafek. That the nature is like, what do you stop making up stories? There's a difference between, you can call it a because the difference between the latest you know, suffix and neurosis. Like if you have a suffix about uh, a ruba de letta come on, so that the address for that suffix, not the rub, it's your shrink. Right? You know, there's, there's, you're, ma- you're making up a suffix, and you just, you say, what about this, what about that? Not every question that you ask is automatically a suffix. So it's very possible that in, that in a ruba de letta come on, you don't have a leidata suffix. But we're talking about ruba de ita come on, right? Where you have a, a X amount of animals. And we want to know, why don't you say Holchim Rov? So he says, you would say Holchim Rov if you're talking about Isurim, where the Torah allows you to rely on the Rov where there's a suffix, and even though there's a suffix. There's a Zerat in a sense, 
The rov is a chiddush. The chiddush is that even though you have a suffix, the Torah gave you the instruments to operate in a world where there are sveikot, where you don't know what the story is. You, you still don't know. You're not fooling yourself. You still don't know. It's still a suffix. The Torah said, okay, since most likely this is the situation, you can rely on that. Okay? That's the, that's the chiddush of rov. But it doesn't mean it's not a suffix. And there may be instances in certain areas of halacha where that's not good enough. Where you need vadai. And where you need vadai, a robe is not sufficient. Right? Just like, Ein hochim b'mamon achar ha-rov. Biz ha-motzi mechaver, lov ha-raya, and rov isn't a good enough raya. Okay, for example. So, um, so here, in the case of Asiri, Asiri vadai rov, amar achman v'lo Asiri safek, and it's still Asiri safek even though you have a rov. That's what the rush says. Okay? So the... How does he know it's Yisurim? Or only because he has this other drasha in this case? Yeah, the because I see, right. Alright. Um, the Chef Shmaita. Is it similar? What? I thought, I thought he said a similar. Who? Chef yes, he quotes the rush, yes. Okay. It's not similar, it's the same. He flushes okay. it out. Okay, I didn't okay. get the rush, but I got it. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> so, the whole, if you've never seen the Chef Shmaita, the whole book is on Dinim of, of Rov and Chazaka and Safek. Okay. Um, okay. They didn't have the Tosfot on Rosh as a separate volume. Okay, etc. So he basically fleshes it out. Um, okay, so Right? Even though we rely on a rove, even lukula, that means it's minat Torah. Ain't no elamitzad halacha. It's exeris akasuf. Okay. Aval ain't no vadai. I don't mean exeris akasuf as something that like it doesn't make any sense. Making a decision. What? You make a decision, and the Torah allows you. Now the Torah, it's sort of like there are meta principles of how do you decide cases. Right, there's the laws of the cases, and then there's, again, like the meta halacha of, okay, now I don't know what the situation is. So I have Rov, I have Chazaka, I have Edus, I have Eid Chadam and Bisurim. You can go through. You have Karov, you have um, whatever, different types of Chazaka. So they're just, they're instruments that the Torah gives you, or the Chachamim give you, to decide. And Rov is one of those instruments. But it doesn't tell you what happened. You still have a suffix. But you can rely on the rove. That's what he's telling you. Okay? That's what he means, mitzah halacha, aval eno vadai. Veno misvara lomar de parish yoter miruba. Veyacholio de parish min amiut. Kemo min arov. All right, this is a little, I understand. Okay? It doesn't, he, I think he could have stopped before and his point would have been stronger. Right, I agree. Okay? And we shim hachi. I agree with the look on your face, okay? Umishim hachi, ba'asiri vaday v'lo asiri safek, kevan de mitzad atzmo hu safek shakul, ela shatorah mitira mishum dechol deparish miru baparish, av midei safek alom nafka, v'atorah amra asiri vaday. Okay, he's explicating the rush. I think he sticks his neck out a little too far, but, but basically he's saying that rov, hulchim achar rov, is still a suffix. Okay? Uh, now, so let's get back. What does this have to do with Kavua? Okay? So we want to understand, let's get back to what we wanted to understand. Why should I say, kol Kavua kemechz al mechzadam? So this, um, let's say, mitigates the problem. It doesn't do away with the problem, but it mitigates the problem. Because what do I have to say? I say, look, any rove is still a suffix. And it's only a chiddish that the Torah has that you can rely, in general, you can rely on the rove. Okay? So what the halacha is, is that if the suffix is a consequence of kavua, so in a sense we go back, we take away the Kiddush of the Rov. Okay. This is just the first 
way of looking at it. You see how I mitigated the situation? It was, well, why would you? Okay, okay, why would you? Okay, hold on. That's, that's the next step. That's the next. I just want to build it slowly. Okay, that ro- you see, if you understand that rove is a given, and of course you shouldn't go after the rove. There's no suffix. So then you really don't begin to understand why kavua should be a suffix. But now what I'm doing, instead of explaining kavua, I'm trying to pull a trick, right? Instead of explaining kavua, I want to explain a way, I want to undermine rove, so that it'll be easier for me to deal with kavua, which I'll do in a moment. But the first step is to say, going after the rove, first of all, is not so pushed, right? Because there are times that the Torah doesn't go after a rove. When you need vada'ut, the Torah does not rely on a rove, does not allow you to rely on the rove. So when the Torah lets me know that it's vada'ut, like asiri vada'ut, the law asiri suffix, so there the rove doesn't help me, because I still have a suffix. Midei suffix lo yatsanu. Okay? So then what I can say, if it's kavua, so I say I revoke the, this instrument of dealing with a suffix. When it's kavua, you don't have holchim acharov. The Torah revokes that. It's not muvan me'ilav. If the Torah didn't say acharei rabim lahatot, then, then you would have to treat machalos asuros the way the Indians don't eat meat. That there's no bittel. Right? They don't offer bittel. Gaisha Kap doesn't offer bittel. Right? If, if there's anything there, so it's asur. There's no... The, right? So we have bittel. So if, you, if the Torah revokes rov, so then you're left with... You still have a suffix and you can't eat it. It's actually a diyun, I think, in the Menchus Chinuch, whether, whether in the Machalot Asurot of, of Goyim, whether they have the Dine Bittel. This is a Ben Noach Kenny, Eber Menachai. So in his Chulant on Shabbos, right, if Eber Menachai falls in there, right, does he have Bittel Barov, Bittel Shish, and the same rules apply, right? Um, anyway, so, so that's the first sweep. The first sweep is to undermine Rov, that when you have Kavua, you don't go after the rope. Okay? But then the next question is, what's the next question? Like, why should that be? Right? That's the next question. Okay. So now let's let's continue. I also don't see how yeah. from the original Pesach they learned a concept called Kavua. It sounds like... Va'arav lo Yeah, I mean, you still don't... Because I, 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 I don't fully understand what the concept of Kavua is. I, I still don't... So that's what we're going to try to figure it out. I would find that situation as Kavua. So hold on. Hold on. All right, so let's take a look um, at Dine Sveikot. Okay? Let's not talk about Rov. I want to understand what Kavua is. Okay? But, but in order to understand Kavua, I have to look at Dine Sveikot. Okay? The halacha is that... Um, do I have the Rambam here? Yes. Let me see. Uh, the next one. Hilchot Shkagot, right. The halacha is that if a person is over uh, an isu karet b'shogeg vaday, so he's chayev chatat kvua. If he's over b'safek, so he's chayev an ashim. Person is chayev an ashim tolui. What is the suffix for which a person is chayev an ashim tolui? Not in every case is a person chayev an ashim tolui. And there's machlokin in the Gemara in Kritut. And the Rambam passed in a certain way, and I just want to work, work with the Rambam, because this is the way, this is the Psaq, okay? The Rambam says in Chot Shkagot, Eino chayav ba'asham talui, ad shiyesham isur kavua. It means, yav chaticha achat mishtei chatichot. Whereas if I just have one chaticha of suffix chayla, suffix shuman, right? Chayla is chiv kare, shuman is mutter, uh, but I don't know whether it's a chayl of a shuman, and I eat it. You're not chayv an ashim tali for that. Okay? You're only chayv an ashim tali in a case of ikba isura. Remember that phrase. This will be very important for now, and it's going to be very important for the shach and chali sveik sveika. For all dine sveikot, this is very important. Ikba isura is, I have, it has to be at least, I have two pieces. One is vaday chaylev, and one is vaday shuman. And I ate one of them, I don't know which one I ate. As opposed to the, the first case, where I only have one piece, and it's suffix chel of suffix shuman. Okay. In the first case, I'm not chayv and ashram tolui, there's no ikba isura, it's possible there's no isur there, and it's possible it is isur, it is isur. But there's no isur in my system. Okay. And the second possibility, for which you chayv kapar of ashram tolui, is you have two pieces, 
One is vadai chelev. One is the other is vad is not is not chelev. And you ate one of them. You don't know which one. Okay. So the so that's what the Rambam um, paints here. Keitzad, which is right. Keitzad achal chelev. V'safek im hayak kizayit or pochot im kizayit. So it's definitely chelev. Okay. That's one case. Oh, shaital lefanav katichat chelav v'katichat shuman v'achal achat mehem ve'yado ezer in achal. Okay, and then he has a whole bunch of other examples which go along the same principle. Hareze mevi asham talui v'chein kol kayotzei bazet. Aval im haital lefanav. I'm in the middle now. Im haital lefanav katicha achat safek shipel or safek shishuman v'achala patur. Sharei ain kan isur kavua. Okay? So you need ikba isura. Okay? The Ramam also in Dinei Sveikot, which we didn't see yet um, through the front door, the Ramam psak in Sveikot Doraita is the very well known principle of Sveikot Doraita Luchumra. He holds that that din is only midrabana. Sveikot Doraita Luchumra is only midrabana. Mi da'oraita, sveke da'oraita l'kula. You got that? Okay. But then how do you deal with Ashim Talui? So the simple, uh, Akron try to deal with it. The simple answer is that the Ramam holds sveke da'oraisa, mi da'oraisa's l'kula, only if there's no isr kavua. If there's an isr kavua, then the Ramam agrees that sveke da'oraisa l'chumra is mi da'oraisa, and if it's tumachi of kares, so then you have an Ashen Talui. Okay. So this has to do not only with the Chi of, of an Ashen Talui, it has to do with Dine Svekot in general. That Svekot Doraisa Lechumra is Midar Raisa if it's Isser Kavua. Okay. So you have this idea of Isser Kavua. So what, does, what difference does that make? I think this might be easier to, to get, our, get our heads around it. There is a di- even though it, is a, it has to do with how I relate to what's in front of me. Even though you could say statistically, it's the same. This is fifty. If I had one, if I had a bunch of pieces of meat, which were a big mixture, fifty-fifty, and I took one out, right, and then I just left it here, and then somebody came along and said, "Oh, what is this?" Well, it's suffix chel, suffix shuman. Okay, the statistics there are fifty-fifty. Or if I have two pieces, one chel, one shuman, and I ate one of them, I don't know which one I ate. The statistics are the same. They're fifty-fifty. Right? But, this is where the halakha gets a little postmodern. The difference is how I relate to it. The statistics objectively are the same. But in one situation, there was no isser here for sure. And the other situation, there was definitely one of these two pieces, one of them was definitely isser. So I came in my safek, when I had my safek, there was, I came into contact with isser. Maybe I ate it, maybe I didn't eat it. But my safek was no lad when I had iser in front of me, so to speak. So that forces me to relate to the situation more severely than maybe there's no iser here at all. Again, objectively, there is no difference. Or maybe somebody will come up. With, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Maisha Kapel, wrote a whole article about mathematical systems and kavua and uh, he talked to me about it beforehand, but I don't understand the mathematics, so I never understood what he was talking about. But um, so maybe there's a mathematical way in terms of set theory to explain these things. I don't know. Okay. That's not the same as the nine stores. No, no, not yet. Maybe it is. That's what I want to draw. So well, Moshe okay. Salvechi did. Hold on. Right I didn't for sure come into contact with this. Oh, no, no. So that, 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 that is what he said. Okay, hold on. Okay. He, may, he said the Ikba Isura in Ashim Talui is the way to understand the halach of kavua in the case of the stores, or in the case of the, kna, of the kna'ani, or the case of the, case of the tzvardim. In other words, I define my system, and if my safek, my leidata safek, is at a time and a place where there are isurim in my, in my system, that is a isur which is yoter chamur. That is a safek, which is yoter chamur. In that type of safek, Rabbi Moshe said, you don't say hokim When there's definitely iser here, 
case of kavua, it's yoter chamor. Okay, you know, it's 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 worse than suffix l'chomer. Like for instance, there are these questions that Chronim ask, and I brought them in, in the prima Gaudim. What happens if you have? Okay, normally you say you have. If you have a suffix, you use you can use a chazaka to answer the suffix, right? You have other instruments. Are you with me? I'm trying not to be distracted by all this, right? <laughs> you have you have yeah, other. I hear what you're saying, but I didn't okay. understand the rush. Okay, the the. Um, if you have a suffix and let's see, um, and you could have, I'm trying to think of uh, some example of a suffix. Okay, you have a case of uh, suffix gerushin, right? You don't know if the get was written lishma, or you don't know if it was kasher, or, or you don't know if it was in a tina, whatever it is, some sort of suffix in the get. So what do we do if you have a suffix in the get? So is the woman muterit or not? So no, she has a cheskat eshet ish. Right? So you have a chazaka. So the chazaka is, you continue, it's another, here's another instrument. You continue the status quo ante until you know otherwise. Until I knew until now this was the situation. Uh, you have to prove to me this situation has changed. Okay? So that's a chazak. A chazak is used when you have a suffix. I don't know what, what really happened, but I'm going to assume that things haven't changed. So the question is, can you use a chazak when the isr is kavua? Can you use a chazak? So, or can you use, um, there are other, like, there's a, there's a principle of Karov, like that you learned from Ha'ira Krova, from Egla Rufa, the city that the person, the body was found, the city that the body was closest to, so that city has to bring the Egla Rufa, right? So what if it's, a, what if it was Kavua, somehow, like, I don't know, really, if you can, if you have Karov against Kavua, or Chazaka against Kavua, so normally if you have a Safek, you use Chazaka, if you have a Safek, you can use Karov. So, but the Ahronim will say that you can't use Chazaka when the suffix is suffix because it's Kavua. It means Kavua is Yoter Chamur than a regular suffix. Right? And that ties the question of saying Kavua Le Mafre and things like that, which we'll see. Okay? So that's one thing. Um, I did not, did you say the Rashi name? Because we have to see the we'd have to see the Martin Sanhedrin. I didn't ask it. I didn't. Um, do you have the Martin Sanhedrin there? Sanhedrin ain't tell him at all. It's not a double corrupt. You can just look up right. You don't have the bar line. Oh, I forget. Sanhedrin ain't tell him at all. Rashi. Where it talks about um, I think on the Arav law. He tells the din of Kavua. Right? The Torah tells us that if there's that nine Jews and one Nochri, the Aravlo, the Kamalov teaches you that the, 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 the Rotech is Paturmi Omesh Beitin because the Nochri is Kavua. Right? The Havle Nochri Kavua Benehem. The Afinim Ehai Kra, the Chok Kavua, Lo Pachot Miliot Nidon Kemechza Al Mechza. Got that formulation? It's not less than mechza or mechza. Just say it's a suffix. It's not less than mechza or mechza. Right? Let's see if he says more than that. Okay. Now, the Rashi says 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 the R
the kavu is like the rov. It's really crazy because the the rov is also kavu. I don't know what he do what he did with that, but it, but he's, he has a half minute to say that kavu is more than just a suffix. Maybe you have to let the kavu answer the question, not just say it's a suffix. Right? He says you can't prove it from here because all you need is a suffix to be meant to to save the guy, right? Right. Right. Okay. Maybe not. Okay. He's basically saying, what can you prove from Arav Lova Kamalav? You can, Arav Lova Kamalav tells you that in the case, it's assumed, it tells you in the case of nine Jews and one guy, and he killed one of them, right? You don't only have Kavana to kill, right? That you let him off the hook. So what does that tell you? I, there are nine Jews, so why don't you, why isn't he hiding on his bait in? Oh, so maybe I'll conclude from here that the one knani makes it like a rov knani. Make, make it not a suffix. Make it like rov knani. So says, no, you can't prove that. Because in order to not um, kill the rotseach, you don't need to get to rov. All you know, you don't know the din of kavua. All you know is the fact that in that, in that situation, the person is pater. That's what you know. The question is, how do you explain the fact that the person is pater? So he says, you can't explain it by saying the kavu is like a rove in the other direction, because you don't need it. It's Okam's razor, right? You don't need that in order to explain the phenomena that the person is putter. To get to, to the p'tur of the rotseach, you only need to say that it's kemechza mechza, because safek nefashat lahakel. That's all you need to say. So that's all you can prove. You can't prove more than what you need to say in order to explain the p'tur of the rotzeach. The rotzeach is pater, it means at least, that's the language, at least kemechza al mechza. You cannot say more than that. You don't, because you don't need it. So, if it's karov, you can't prove it from here. If it's already mechza al mechza, that is sufficient to explain the phenomena of patering the Israel. Okay? Okay. But I thought 49% would have been enough to, if it would have been 51%, you would have killed the Jew? Because... In, 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 in that, right? It's a Samechta Suffolk Lakula, right? Suffolk is Lakula. That, that's the Sukkim Kulim. How do we know the Raisa? Because you can, okay. you because can kill a guy for uh, Maka Right, but that's his role. That's a Rubid Latakam. Right. Okay. Anyway, let's. Yeah. So, in other words, there's, there's, there's a half a minute here. Okay, I'll show you the Achron that talked about. So, the half a minute here is that ro, that Kavua is a positive halachic statement. It's not the way I said until now, that it's just a lack of the rove, because it's a more severe question, so you don't have a rove, you're left with a regular suffix. It could be that this is worse, more hamur, than a regular suffix. The fact that the issue is here means it's worse than a regular suffix. And not only can't I use rove, it's, it's not that there's no rove in the case of kavua. It's kavua is one thing, and rove is another thing. There's a conflict between them, and kavua wins. That's how Rashi is looking at it. The way I looked at it was much more benign, in a sense. Rove is a chiddush, right? So sometimes you don't have the chiddush, so you're left with a suffix. There's no conflict between the rov and the kavua. When it's kavua, you can't use a rov. Rashi is no. There's, there's, there are conflicting instruments. Sometimes that happens. You can have a rov telling you one thing and a chazaka telling you another thing. That's where you get to this sugya of ruba of chazaka. Like what, what wins out, right? So you can have different instruments that lead you in different directions in terms of guiding you what to do. So that's how Rashi looks at Kavua. Let me show you um, the Prima Gadim.
Yeah, in a second, but I have it underlined here. So. That was just like for your fun reading. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know. And you know, the Prima Gillen was a bestseller. Well, it got printed in the back. Of it. it got printed in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Some people only got printed in the back because they knew the printers. You know, but he got printed in the back by virtue of his merits. Okay. Um, here, one second. He has all these questions here. This is in Kuf Yud. There's a long piece in the in the Sifte Dat. Oak Yud Dalit. Um, let's see, where should I start from here? Let's see. Here, in Hachi, in Ari, he has like different different questions that he asks about this. Hachakira Please try to say where you are. Okay. Oh, you have it? Okay, it's in Simon Kuf Yud. I can't see it. Oh, the same, you have the same um, edition? Okay, because I have it. We were modern. I have the medieval edition. Just after the printing press, it was the first printing press. Anyway, the Gutenberg printing press. Wait, Raish kept saying, where is it in there, Father? What? You doubt it. It says Hachakira Shnia, Hachakira Bet. Is that the beginning? No. <laughs> it's in the middle. It's, well, I have to see the end to tell you where it is in relationship to the beginning. But uh, it's in the middle. Wait, the Arya Dal is not very long. Arya Dal is not long at all. Are we in the right place? What is your do? Sifte Da, not the Mishpizot Zahav. The... The Prima Gadim divides into the Mishpatot Zahav, which he wrote on the Taz, and the Sifte Dat, which he wrote on the Shah. Yeah, so what do we need to be I'm about? the Sifte Dat. Oh, it's already a macho. Okay. Where are you? Sifte Dat? It'll say on top. Is it easy to put in the search? Yeah. Okay. So, Sachakira Hashniya, he. I'll read it slowly, okay? Until you find it. Kevan. Begali Kra. The low nasal bataruba, since there's a the Torah taught us that you shouldn't be holech achar harov in a case of kavua. Kol shekain batar chazaka. What? Tell me what? You didn't find it. You don't know. It's a hakira It's on the at the bottom of the second page, the second to last paragraph. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, Kevan de Gali Kra, de lo nasal bataruba, that you shouldn't be holding a kaharov, kol shike batar chazaka. So certainly you shouldn't go after a chazaka. Why? De ruba bachazaka, ruba adif. O dilma, hecha de Gali, Gali, hecha de lo Gali, lo Gali. What's a suffix? Okay, listen to, the, listen to what he's thinking about. We know that if it's kavua, right, you don't go after the rov. Okay. So now, how, how is he um, building it? He's saying you have kavua, and lo, and against the kavua, he's holding the kavua as the fact that there's an isr here that creates. Let's try to bring this down. Okay. That creates a positive halachic reality that there's an isr in front of me somewhere. And I relate to that situation with a greater level of severity than stama suffolk. Okay? It's not stama suffolk. There's a suffolk with, uh, you could say maybe it's like raglayim ladava. Okay? There's suffolk in front of me. There's definitely an iser here. Okay? Because there was definitely an iser here, I cannot use rove against this looming presence of Issa. Okay? I'm getting a little dramatic, but that's how he's looking at it. Okay? So if, now he's asking the following question. Since I can't bring a rove to bear against the presence of this Issa, 
What about other instruments that I use in cases of Sveikot? Like Chazaka. So now, now he does this little uh, 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 um, arithmetic cheshbon. The principle is, we're not going to, I don't know if we're going to talk about this at all, but we're not certainly going to talk about it now, but just accept this as a given. Ruba v'chazaka, ruba adif. The Gemara says that when you have a rove against the chazaka, a rove is more powerful than a chazaka. Okay? So if you have... Um, talking about ruba the isa kaman. Uh, I'm not sure if you're talking about only Ruba Disa come on. Ruba Behemot, the young Trefot, against the uh, Cheskas Isra the Behem. Okay? So you have a su- right? So, so you have a Cheskas Isra because the animal was Avi Menachai, and right? And then you have Ruba Behemot, the young Trefot. No, Ruba Behemot would be a Cheskas Isra. Right. That would be a Heter, and against the Isra, so Ruba Chazaka, Ruba Adif. So the Rove. Oh, this is the case. Okay, rov mitzvah is a shchita mumchun hein. That's a rov the lesser come on. So it's even rov the lesser come on, right? So rov mitzvah is a shchita mumchun hein. Most people who shecht know what they're doing. I never learned shchita. Never learned how to do shchita. I learned shchita, but I never learned how to do shchita. And the fact is, I really never shechted an animal, right? And most people that don't know how to shecht an animal don't shecht animals. So the, what happens if you find an animal which was shchita? Find an animal on the street and it, look, it was shchita. So, and you don't know who shechted it. So you have, here's an example. So what does the Chazaka tell you? Cheskas Isser. So Cheskas Isser. It was Eivim and Achai, and Eina Shechuta, right? Eina Zvucha. So you have a Cheskas Isser. And you have a Safet. So what do you do if you have a Safet and you have a Cheskas Isser? It's, a, it's Aser, right? But against the Cheskas Isser, you have a Rov. You know this was Nishchat, and the Rov tells you, Rov Mitsui Neitzel Shechita Mumchenei. Most people that shecht animals... Are, know how to shecht. So the rove tells you that it's a good shechita. The chazaka tells you that, it, that, that, that it's aser. So ruva chazaka, ruva adif. Okay? That's an example from the Gemara and Kulin. Yes? We had the opposite case with the Tino gift that got raved, right? She had a chazkat of hetera. She got, but most of the people that were coming to rape her were probably, uh, well then, you know, they, if they were psulim, then she was going to be psulim. So, okay, so ruva... <laughs> Okay, so, all right, so let's... Let, okay, I just so wanted to just remind you of that earlier. I think what's, okay. <laughs> what? what's still very much bothering me about the case that we learned in the Torah with the Ovid Kachata. No, no, I'm not that talking about that. I'm, I'm, I'm the whole in the principle I'm, I'm, there, I'm, it makes it mutter and it's not Isser. It doesn't... It has to do not with whether, meaning, whether, whether this person is Chayat Misa. What yeah, but I'm going to take this situation less seriously if I have a Goy not Kavua there because my chances of being held responsible are less now. You keep describing the kavua is when I come in contact with the iser. It's such a traumatic and serious principle. Oh, are we going to the thing that's thing here? Seriously. So, so with but the, with the presence of something. Learned, but that case when we learned it, well, it's a kavua case. It's a kavua case. case. Okay. So I'm not because there's the a presence of something. Take me take so the presence of something here means I cannot utilize a rov. Okay. okay. Right. I was talking about in terms of iser. Right. Okay. It means so, that it changes how you would, how you would relate to it. It means it changes how you relate to it otherwise. The intensity no. of coming into contact with, with the Isser. No, with like whatever it is that, that, that is relevant. That right? I was talking about Isser, but Tov was right. Okay? So let, let, let's look what he says. So he says, on one hand, this is his Cheshbon. So since Ruba Chazaka Ruba Adif, let's accept that. Okay? So if I see that a rove is impotent against Chakavua, so Kalva Chomer. If a rove is stronger than a chazaka, if a rove is worth three points, and a chazaka is worth, I hate to talk about it like this, right? A rove is worth three points, and a chazaka is worth two points, because ruba chazaka, ruba adif, if a rove is incapable of overcoming um, kavua, so kavua must be four points, right? So if three points isn't better than four points, and certainly two points isn't better than four points, right? So if a rove isn't good against kavua, then certainly a chazak isn't against good against kavua because ruba the chazak or ruba adif, right? Or dilma hecha de gali gali, or maybe or maybe not. Right? All right. So what are the two sides of the question? The two sides of the question is: Do I understand kavua as merely an absence of the rove? The Torah says you don't have rove when it's kavua, right? But it tells you nothing, it and it's a suffix. Doesn't mean you can't use other kalim. It's not a rove against kavua. It's just you don't have you don't have a rove. 
Or do you say, no, because it's kavua, there, it's, it's, it's like the Torah insists that it's a suffix. It's not stama suffix, I don't know. Right? It's I insist on the suffix. And therefore, other um, instruments that are generally used in Sveikot are also invalid. Okay? That's, um, that's what he talks about here. He talks about it again um, in the Hachakira Shlishit. He, said, he talks about it in terms of Karov. Who had the kaimlon rov the karov harov the same thing in the case of the mate suppose um, the body that was found right that's, that you have a case of egla rufa the body that was found was closer to Hackensack right so the question is whether it's hack in, in the marshlands right the mafia right okay so you found a body in the marshlands right so you want to know and near Hackensack but there are eight million people in New York. And there are, I don't know how many people in Hackensack, right? But, so the, the Karov is to Hackensack, right? But the Rove is New York. So who, which city, the Beitin of which city, is going to have to bring the Egla Rufa, the, the, the Ir HaKrova, which is the way the Torah describes it, or the Ir where there's Rove people? Where did this guy come from? Most probably from Bensonhurst, right? Rather than so Hackensack. He's in the Bay on well, the <laughs> right, okay. Mike is from Benzers. Okay. So, so the question is, you go after Rov, you go after Karov. So the Gemara says, Rov the Karov, or Chimach HaRov. Okay, so the, the Irha, where most people come from, is what determines, and not the physical distance. So now, the Im Piresh, Av Shekrova Lechanut, Trefa, Kshera, so then it gets this question of the rove of the, it, it's more closer to one, but the rove tells you one thing. Right? Again, you have this question of kavua against karov. Okay? All right. Um, that's another point. All right. The, all right. There's a very important question, which we touched upon, which has to be clarified. And that is, we saw the importance of the Leidata Safek. It was objectively, in a sense, not, it's all the same. Right? The, the statistics are the same. The piece of meat came from the stores. What difference does it make? This is what, like, at the end of the day, like, you have to have an answer to this question. But what difference does it make? Right? So there's supposed to be some sort of... Uh, That's my shizar. Right? Okay, so what difference does it make? So... It, if there's some sort of legal um, way of dealing with this, it has to, it has to do with the how you determine what the sha'at le'data safek is. Because you have to say that what determines the question is to what do I relate my question to? Okay, and there may be criteria for determining saying this question relates to the stores, this question relates to the meat, when I relate to the stores, I have kavua, when I relate to the meat, it's parush, okay? and, and what determines whether I relate to it this way or that way. Okay? So there's, so one of the major issues is sha'at data safek, not when does it become unclear to me, but rather with regard to which point in time do I have my safek. So even though at the time when I was in the stores, I had no idea that I was, that I, I forgot that there are trade stores here, or maybe I thought that I was in a kosher store, or I wasn't thinking at all. And when I came home, I realized I don't know which store I went into, but the safek relates back to that moment in the stores. Right? I think back, and I say, gee, I don't know where I was. Okay? Um, so that's a question of sha'at data safek. Now, um, the Gemara Pesachim, Talks about here. We are. Okay. Okay. Teisha. Okay. Teisha Tzibus is shy before pet or shloshim. We're within shloshim yom before the before pet. Okay. Teisha Tziburin. Take a trend on whatever you. Okay. Teisha Tziburin Shel Matzah. The Echad Shel Chametz. 
right? nine piles of matzah and one pile of chametz. The ata achbar, the shaka. One a mouse came and took one of them. The lo yadinan i matzah shakal i chametz shakal. Okay, we don't know which whether it took chametz or matzah. Okay. And there's a machlok to show whether you're talking and it went into the house and it's a question whether you have to be both take the house again or whether you have, whether you can eat this piece of suffolk matzah, suffolk chametz. Okay? So what do we say? Hainu teisha chanuyot. So teisha tzibun shal matzah v'echad shal chametz. So it's sveka do raisa l'chumra. You can't say on k'necha arov that it's a mistama matzah. Yeah? Hainu teisha chanuyot. Piresh v'ata achbar v'shakal. But if the out of this group of matzah chametz, one got separated, all by itself, somehow it got separated, and then the achbar came and took it, took one. Hainu seifa, the tana teisha chanuyot kulam ofrim basan shluta v'achat mochet basan nevela v'lakach mechat mi adino yedem ezim lakach sveko asur uvenimtza halacha charov. Right, so this is a case of nimtza. So if it was Poresh by itself, and then the Akbar took it, so I can go after the Rov, but if the Akbar took it from the group, then I'd say, Kol Kavu Akimetz on that Okay? Okay. Now, take a look at Tosfot. I have Tosfot here, yeah? Yeah, later on. Later on? In nature and definition. Nature and definition. Okay, Tosfot. Okay? Tosfot asks, not in the very beginning... First, he argues with Rashi whether the question is about the, the Chi of Bidika or the question is about the Isra Chila. That's. I don't want to talk about that. He says. Okay, that is a separate question. That was so disgusting. We can't tell what it was. Okay. The Im Tomar. The Im Tomar. It's the fourth line. I don't know if, if it came out in the same way you printed it as when I printed it, because I might have formatted it differently. It's the Im Tomar. It's towards the beginning of the Tosfot. Actually, it's the fourth line of the Tosfot. The, the last word on line is the Im. Do you have it the same way? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, the Im Tomar. Ki ata akhbar v'shakal mihani tziburi. Right? If the akhbar took it directly from the pile, from the group of piles, right? Amai chashiv kavua. Why is that considered kavua? Let's get into the Rachel. Let's get into the definition of what kavua is. Amai chashiv le kavua. My shna nimtza b'fi achbar mi nimtza b'yad nochri the pergin anoshe parich l'rav the amar basash and talem in ayin asur uve nimtza halacha char harov mishani she nimtza b'yad nochri. So if you find the piece of meat, the basanit ayin, in the hands of the nochri, so the halacha is hochim acharov. Where did the meat come from, right? No, no, the, the, the same ten store situation, right? Nine a kosher, one is treif, but you didn't find it in the stores. You found the biyad on nochri, you can be holech acharov. Finding the nochri in the hand of the nochri is like finding it in the parking lot. In other words, in the parking lot, the leidat safek is not bekavua. The Yad Nochri, when the Nochri took it from the stores, there was no Leidat HaSafek, because it's mutter for the guy to eat Nevel. So he doesn't have a Safek. So where, what's the Leidat HaSafek for you? When you found it, the Yad Nochri, so you find it in the hand of the Nochri, it's like you find it in the parking lot, because that's when it comes to contact with you. And, and for you, it's a Safek. For the guy, it's not a Safek. Okay? So the Akbar, it's not a Safek for the Akbar, it's a suffix for you. So why in the Akbar do you say, if the Akbar took it from the piles, you have to say, you say Kavua. But if the Nachri took it from one of the stores, you say it's Parsh. Okay? Got the question? V'omeri, Tahach amayri, Kishirainu shalakach mina Kavua. We saw the mouse take it. Shenolad ha-safek b'makom kviut. Aval im lo ra'inu havalei kepiresh vazlina bataruba 
Okay? So he makes a distinction between what's called parash lufanenu and the low parash lufanenu. If it was parash lufanenu, that's like kavua. Okay? okay parash lufanenu. nothing to do with the mouse at that point. Because if it's parash lufanenu, then we don't even, we can't tell one pile from another. But, of course, no, we, we, can't, we know that it's nine and one. But we don't know what they are. Right? And we saw the mouse go and take it. Right, and we don't know which one the mouse took. If it wasn't parash lufanenu, we don't need to say that. Why don't you say now the mouse and the mouse was brought it to me, or the mouse put it down, and I, now I come and take it, right? So he said, even though now it's kavua, there's a question is like this: What is the sha'at le'dat hasafek? Now, until now, right? In the simple case of the teisha chanuyot, the simple case is I took it. So the sha'at le'dat hasafek is when I took it, when I physically took it. And that's when it becomes a suffix for me. What's out there, what I don't know about, is not a suffix to me. All sorts of things are happening right now in stores all over the world, in multiple time zones. There are all sorts of things happening which I have no notion of. And I don't care. Right? It's not a suffix for me, right? right? It becomes a suffix when I take it. Now I have to ask, what is this? Where did I take this from? Where am I? Right? And this is my late data suffix. So what is the data safek here? So he says, even though it's a chiddush here, parush lefanenu, that is your le data safek. You do not have to be the one to be taking it. If you are witness to it being taken, that is your shat le data safek. The mouse is your heilig shaliach, right? When the mouse took it, but you're watching. That's when you have the safek. You have the safek. Is which one is that mouse taking? And that matters to me. So that, for me, is a shat le'dat ha'safek. If I would see the guy take it, I would have the same question. That is my shat le'dat ha'safek. The difference is that it's nimtza b'yad guy. There was no parash lefanenu. And that's the difference. It's just the mitzias difference in the cases. Okay? So parash lefanenu is kavua, according to Tosfot. Okay? Take a look at the... This has, this has to be the safek that I don't know which is which, not that I don't know what I went into. Because you're talking about Tziburim, so then... If the, you saw the guy go into one of the stores, you know what you went into. It would be the same thing. Okay? And that would be the case of Kavua, if you saw it. If you didn't see it, so I know he went into one of the stores, but that's not my Safek. My Safek is now, when he gives it to me. or well, when I want to take it from him, right now, what is this piece of meat? So my Leidata Safek is when it's Parush. I don't have the Isr Vada in front of me. The, it, the, the came from someplace it was also That's history. Don't bother me with history. Okay? All right. Now, let's take a look at the Ran. And with this, we'll finish for now. Okay? The Ran says, well, he asks the same question. This is Ran al al Arif. It's, uh, it's, it's the last source before the Prima Gaudin. Yeah? So he says, um, let's see. You bolded it. Yes, I bolded it. I bolded it. The linear air. Yeah? Shekol shelo baliado mimakom kviuto. Parush Lufanenu is Parush, not Kavua. Okay. Tosfot holds the din of Parush Lufanenu is Minat Torah is Kavua. The Ran holds Parush Lufanenu Midoraisa is Parush. Midorabanan, if I allow, if I say that it's Parush Lufanenu, that, then what are people going to say? You're just playing games. If I, if the guy takes it from me, it's Mutter. Right? But if I take it myself, it's Asr. What are you talking about? If the guy takes it from Mutter, I'll take it myself already. Right? That is a normal thing to be goes around. Right? So, the, so here we have a very, you have a very important question. What actually the two, there are really two questions here. There are two assumptions. The, fir, the first question is what is the shat le data safek? Is the shat le data safek when you physically come into contact with it, or when you become, or when you know about it, right? When you become aware of it. Okay, that's one thing. And the second question is, let's say that becoming aware of it is a shat le data safek. Let's go with that. Okay. But now I come and I take it. 
Maybe that's a new lay data safek. It could be that maybe I have two lay data safek. Uh, first of all, is what's the shatli data safek? And then what is Koveya as continuously being the shatli data safek? Maybe you can have a, sh- a lay data safek. And then something happens, and now you have a new lay data safek. So I saw the guy take it. Okay, so now that's a safek. But when I take it from him, that's a new lay data safek. And now I can say it's Kavuah. Before it was Kavuah. Right? So but it, according to the, according to Tosot, I'm saying two things. I'm saying when you saw it, that's a Shedat Leidat HaSafek. And not, and not only that, but that remains the Shat Leidat HaSafek. And it does not change even when you come to direct contact with it afterwards. Okay? So we're going to have to look at this more closely. Okay? This has direct bearing to these issues about... Um, when you talk about Orla, about Suffolk Orla... And they talk about people who are, if a person who's not high of picks it, and then it comes in contact with you when it's already not in the trees. If you have a suffix or a bunch of trees, and you know some of them are oral, but you don't know which ones, that's kavua. And the Thailandi picks it, right? This is the, the Chuvas talk about this before they were Thailandi, so they talk about if people who are not from pick it. So whether it's considered a shatli data safek, because fit, what's considered a data safek, he's not interested in asking the question. So, but theoretically, it applies to him, but he's not going to ask. So is that considered shat like that safek? Right? So that, that's the way I think it is it's in the Chazunish. But today you would say, if the Thailandi picked it, so there's no shat like that safek. They picked it, and then they were ma'arev it all in the boxes, and you have all the beautiful plums and peaches, etc., in, in the boxes, and now it's in your store. That's parush. Right? But it, it was kavua beforehand, but it was, it was parush ayidei nochri. Right, but maybe there's Jew watching. Right, you get all these different things, and that's the word. It gets a lot nicer. Any Jew watching? It doesn't have to be you watching. Oh, so that's the question. There's a shatli data safek there. Does that she that shatli data safek stick? Or now, now you have a new shatli data safek. For him, it's kavua. The Jew saw it. It's kavua. Then he was arivit. Now it comes to you, and it's parush. But there was a shatli data safek be kavua, and that chases. It chases the material to the bitter end. Or not? Okay. So that's what we have to talk about. That's part of what we have to talk about. Okay? All right, we'll stop here. What are you saying about uh, uh, Rabbi Fox? Uh, so Rabbi Fox will be here next um, next week. Um, I asked him to speak for about a half an hour. At the beginning? Or at He's going to speak at the end. All right, so we're going to start our shear earlier. Right? If normally we start at, normally we start around 7, right? Normally we start. So he's going to be speaking at around 7.30. So we'll start. Normally we'll start, start from the so beginning. Confused. Don't we start Normally at six? Start at six. No, but we usually start the shear at around seven, right? We have not. That, that's not our normally anymore. We have a chazaka the other way now. Whatever. We're going to start this year. We'll start this year at six next week. Forget about what was.